Hi, everyone. I'm Milagro. Uh, I'm a front end developer. I work with the Android team. And I'm part of the ones that are behind the Android settings for Um And well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, this session. Uh, something that I would like us to learn or maybe know at the end of this session is how to navigate through the Android settings web app, uh, create con some configurations related to synchronization, general appearance settings, but also learn how to uh, find these configurations in your device, in your Android device, uh, understand which roles can use this app and what are the difference between these roles, uh, run user sync test, and know how to add the web app to the server in case you feel like uh, trying or kind of playing with the web app. So let's just start with what is the Android settings web app? Well, uh, the web app is will allow us to create um, configurations, defining data, metadata in the Android uh, app that, uh, well, that the Android app will uh, use for synchronize. Um, Synchronize. Also, you can um, run tests per user. Um, where in these tests, uh, I'm going to talk about later what are these tests. You can also customize the appearance of the screens that you have uh, in your device uh, in the Android app. Uh, but and also, you can create analytics and visualizations. And all these parameters uh, will be saved on the data store. Um, which roles can, can use the, the Android settings web app? Well, please know that only users with all authorities, and I'm going to say it again, this thing, all authorities, um, are able to define configurations uh, or parameters in the Android settings web app. Other, other users or users that does not have all authorities will have access to the Android settings web app, but uh, only in a view mode, uh, which means that you can view what are the, the settings that are configured, but you cannot edit them. So for example, uh, a user with all authorities uh, can do the first time setup. The first time setup, it's uh, uh, when you run, all, when you save all the, all the default values that you need for, uh, uh, when you want when you want to use the settings web app. But also, if you uh, if you have all authorities, you can go through general synchronization, appearance, and analytic settings, and you can create, edit, uh, delete uh, these these settings. Otherwise, if your user does not have all the authorities, uh, then you cannot do the first time setup. And you can on again. You can only have uh, you can have access only in view mode. And for the for the synchronization settings, uh, it has a subsection that is called user sync test. And only for user sync test, it doesn't matter which kind of user you are logging, because you can uh, run or try the, this this section. Uh, so what is the difference? So for example, this is an example of how the one of the sections in the uh, in the Android settings web app. So we can see that if if the user that I'm logging has all authorities, then I can select or check in, in this checkbox. I can um, if you find a uh, a text field, I can put information there. I can click on the buttons that said edit, delete. I can add, or that means create more uh, more settings. I can reset all values to default. That means to remove all the, to, to go back to the default values. And also uh, if I'm changing the parameters, then the save button will uh, be enabled. But what happened if I have if I'm logging with a regular user or a user that does not have all authorities? Then this is what uh, this is how it will look. It's the same. It's, it's the same section, 
but and it has and it's showing me the same information but i cannot be able to but all the things like buttons fields checkbox uh select options um will be disabled um and that's um for the academy purpose uh, if you log in to with, using your admin user, you will find the address that is web app, um, but only you will find everything in this uh, like like this uh, screen. You can only use it as a in, in view mode. Again, this is only for uh, the academic purposes. So uh, don't worry if you cannot create or edit or delete because it's only um, your your user. Uh, has only access as view mode. Uh, so now let's talk about the, the settings. Uh, the first kind of settings that we have access or that we can create in the Android settings web app is the general. So general settings uh, means uh, includes configurations such as SMS configuration, analytics on Matumu, uh reserved values and encrypt device the, the database of your device i'm i'm going to talk a little bit of what means encrypt device because this is a critical action so when you decide to click on to check this this box uh, what you are doing is the what, what what you do will affect the local database so we have uh, database in our devices, but also we have database uh, in a, um, we have two database, right? One in our devices, the, the one is related to our devices and one is related in, to our servers, the DHIS2 servers. When we talk about uh, this setting of encrypt device database, we only talk about the device one. So we'll affect the local database of all Android devices synchronizing uh, with the server, but it won't not it will not affect the um, database that is uh, related to the server. My my sound confused, but again, this only affects to the device or the devices that are that will be synchronized. Uh, by default, uh, these. Um, the, the encrypt option is um, uh, it's um, but by default uh, it's the this option is uh, your database is not encrypted but a user with all uh, authorities can check this option um, at that point uh, if you save the if the admin uh, if this user save the this configuration then after syncing uh, it, it will affect the devices. Um, encrypting the database will have impact on database volume and performance of Android of the Android app. And also it's important to know that uh, by selecting or unselecting this option, uh, there will be no data lost, uh, even if you, if you haven't uh, synchronized the server. So just in, just to remember uh, that it's very important to know that this is a critical option. Always be aware before checking this option. Mm, let's continue. So as I said at the beginning, what I want to do, uh, to, I want us to, to, to learn uh, in this session is not only create settings, but also learn where to find these settings on your, on your Android device. So gen for general settings, uh, I mentioned that we have reserved value and also SMS settings. These two settings, we can find it uh, in our devices. So if we, we open our device and we go to the settings section, we will find a lot of, <laughs> a lot of different parameters or settings. Um, but if we go to reserved values, then we can check that are the same values that we put it on the Android settings web app. So I put it 90 reserved values and we can find here 90 reserved values. We can refill these uh, settings, uh, these values. Uh, 
also we can find SMS configuration. And uh, again, in, uh, we go to settings and under settings, we will find SMS settings and um, SMS gateway and result, sorry, um, result sender number are the same ones that we, uh, that, that we can, that we configure in the settings web app. Mm. So now let's move on to the next kind of uh, settings that we have access to. So synchronization. What synchronization means, uh, what we can find here is basically synchronization parameters. Uh, we have four subsections here. We have global synchronization, uh, data sets, uh, programs, and uh, user scene tests. Let's start with global. Uh, the global settings are basically configurations such as how often we want to synchronize our metadata and data. And again, if we uh, this kind of configuration are also find, find, can be found in the settings of your Android app. So if, in this case, I I, I left the, this uh, configuration as default values that are basically one day for metadata, one day for data. Um, metadata uh, here will uh, in your device, in your Android device is found as sync configuration. So it says syncing period is one day, one day uh, for metadata. And uh, how often uh, should data sync? Uh, data is for one day, again, sync data one day. It's, it's, uh, I'm just trying to show you uh, that some of these configurations can be found in your device. Um, so we can navigate through, through both of them. Um, also a good reminder is that the parameters that we create on this Android settings web app will override the settings that you will find in your Android app on your device. So the next, oh, the next one is program settings. So I'm gonna go to the server. Um, so this is the Android settings web app, as I show you in general synchronization, no programs. Uh, before talking about the, the this specific section, uh, section, I will, I, I want, you to know that through the Android setting web app, you will find a very similar um, kind of config uh, layout. Let, let's say, uh, let's say like that. Uh, so when you find uh, this division that has, or a section that that gives you a global and a specific settings, it will probably work very similar. So, which means is that uh, when you configure uh, something in this section, you have you can configure uh, in two ways. One, configuring something or setting um, set setting some configurations or, or some parameters for all the programs or data sets that the Android user has access to, uh, which means. When you are, if you create something in the global section, it will apply to all the uh, all the all the programs or data sets. Um, but if you decide to create a very specific uh, configuration, for example, you you want something very different for for a specific program or a specific data set, that you can create it in the other the other part of the the section um, that is the specific one. Um, this uh, configuration will only apply to the um, to the program or the data set that you are creating, you are adding here. Um, and this will work uh, for uh, all the sections that have this, uh, this kind of layout, global and specific settings. Uh, so now I'm going, going back to what means, what we can do in the, program, the synchronization program settings. 
is again we, we can have we find here some a global configuration or global settings and uh, what we can do here is basically um, apply um, some parameters or give or give some parameters as maximum pi downloads uh, maximum events to download uh, the dates that, that we want to, to use uh, for download. Um, these are parameters or limits that we can we can give so we can know how much to restrict how much we can um, we want to synchronize. Um, also we can decide if we want this this kind of parameters to be applied globally or to a uh, or per program or per or, or units. Uh, for program, in case we want to talk, uh, we want to create now a specific uh, setting, then we can do it like this. So it's basically the same uh, settings that, that we have here, uh, but that are, that are applied, um, but that will be applied only for a specific, uh, for a specific program. So uh, going here, we click on add program, then we select the program that we want. Um, let's say malaria case. Um, we decide which, uh, what kind of configuration we want to add it. So let's say I don't want uh, 500, I want 550. Uh, I can also decide to give it zero. Like I don't want anything to be downloaded for the malaria case. Um, we have the same options that I found here uh, in the global section. So involvement dates last three months. And after clicking on save program, um, now we see that the save button also has been enabled. We can click on save. And after clicking on save, um, this configuration, it's going to be uh, ready to be synchronized on your device. And you will find the this information also in your device. Um, there are some difference uh, of what kind of settings that you will you'll, you'll find on your uh, here. So it will this information will depend on the kind of program that you are choosing. Uh, so for example, for malaria case, we found um, TI information, but for let's say information campaign, the kind of info, the kind of settings or parameters that we can add are more related to events. So it depends if the program that we are choosing uh, it's um, tracker or event program. Um, Sorry, uh, here. Um, but as I said, um, the inf where we can uh, the kind of uh, configuration that we create in for program settings can also be found in our devices. Uh, the parameters that we created in the case for global in the global case uh, can find can be found in the settings sections. Uh, under sync pro sync parameters, um, here we we can find uh, that it sets events uh, six hundred six six, uh, but it but next to it it sets one thousand because that's the limit that we are that's the parameter of the limit of how much we want us uh, to be downloaded. So it doesn't um, for the case of events. Um, for the case of DEIs, we put it uh, 450, and which means is that we we might not have that kind of uh, like um, let's say thousand events or 450 event uh, DEIs, but um, we can do or we can also have more than that, but we are limiting, we're putting some parameters or some limits to how much we want to download. 
So as we can say, it's the same the same numbers that we we put it on the global uh, in the global settings. The global program settings are the same that are, that can be found in your device. But also you you can see here there's another another mini section uh, that is part of the sync parameters. And as I said, we created um, not only global uh, we can not only create global settings we can also create a specific settings. So this is how we create the specific settings. Um, after creating uh, a specific setting and also synchronizing uh, your device to make sure that you have the more the most recent information, uh, you can also find here, for example, like create two. One is for child program and the other one is for antenatal care. And um, these two appear here. So again, settings. We go uh, to sync parameters, and it here says there are two programs with a specific settings. These two programs are again antenatal and child program, and both them, both of them, have the same amount of of events and TIs that we have put it on the the under setting for that. Um, Uh, in, well, we can save it here. If we click save, now it's safe on the on the data store. Uh, data sets, data sets work very similar to the programs. As we can see, again, we have global and specific settings. But the difference between the previous section is that here we only have access. We can only uh, create configuration related to the maximum. Uh, the the maximum number of periods we want to don download. Uh, so for this instance, I put it ten, uh, ten periods to be download. Um, for the specific set, uh, a specific uh, setting, uh, it's very similar to the previous one. Uh, click on add a uh, data set. We can choose the data set that we want to create. Let's say this one. And as you can say, as you can see, um, uh, some um, a default value is going to to appear, and this default value is related to the type of period that this data set has. So this data set uh, has a yearly period, but the the other one, like the one that it's already created, has a monthly period. So the default number of periods uh, will change depending on that. Mm. Uh, so the next section is wait, uh, user sin test. Right, so user sin test, as I said it at the beginning, is the only section that, that it doesn't matter if you have um, if, if you're logging with a user that has all authorities or doesn't have all authorities, you can uh, use this um, this section and you can try it here. So what you can find here is, uh, what we do here is basically, um, um, we select a, a user so let's, uh, it doesn't matter, also it doesn't matter, you can run this test uh, even if you are not, uh, with users that you are not currently logging. So for example, now uh, with this DWP user, but I want to try a test with this user, for example. So I search the user, I click on run test, and it's running some tests. And the information that this test will give me is information related to uh, how many or units um, this user has access to, data sets, programs, program rules related, uh, linked to the org units that this user has access to, but also metadata and data downloads and data download size. So we can have uh, a number of how much these like. Uh, how much uh, this user will probably download. 
So it, that's an, a number that to have in, uh, as a reference uh, if you in case we want to know, okay, uh, where the user that is that this user will have enough space in 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 the device to if 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 the even if it, this user has all these configurations, just just to let us know a little bit of of this kind of uh, of what this user has access to uh, in terms of synchronization. Uh, we can also notice uh, um, in this in this section that some of the numbers that appear here are highlighted in red, which means that these values are the maximum or are greater than the maximum recommended value uh, that we are said. Oh, but the, these are values that we are recommending here, um, just to take it uh, as take it uh, as a, something that we are recommending. Um, so now let's move on to appearance. Appearance settings. So appearance settings is a section that is focused on the filters, where we can show um, what can be appear on the different uh, screens that we have access to, uh, meaning home, event listing, DI search, and data sets. Uh, in appearance, we can we have these these filters. We have access to choose these these filters, so we can decide if we we want to if we want to show um, date, organization, unit, sync status assigned to me filters, and we can also find. And in this case, I put all these. I I enable all these filters. So we can find it here this, uh, in the, the in this home screen, the same filters, date, organization, units, and status assigned to me. Uh, for program, it's very similar to the to the previous one to to the home, but again we are gonna use the this this layout of uh, global and specific settings. Um, when we talk, uh, um, and also uh, something interesting about the, the program uh, appearance settings is that we can not only choose the, or customize uh, the filters, but we can also decide if we want to show these complete uh, percentage element. That show, uh, what this element does is show us uh, the, the percentage completion uh in the program toolbar so we can decide if we want to show uh, we have the option to to show it to decide if we want to show it as globally like to so it applies to all the programs or we can also decide to do it uh in for a specific for a specific uh program again this is the same um um, you know the drill. It, click on that, choose a program, decide what kind of configuration we want to, to give to this program, save, and then save again. Um, so I'm going to show you, for example, what I did for a program specific. Uh, I create uh, two specific configuration for these programs, one for a child program and one for antenatal care. So for antenatal care, I, I um, allowed that the, the filters to be shown uh, will be sync status and organization unit. So we can see here a screenshot of the antenatal care. This is how it will look in your device. So you go to antenatal care and you will find in this case, for example, only our unit and sync uh, filters. Uh, data sets works very similar as the previous one. Uh, we have uh, only these three filters. We have the period or, or unit and sync, uh, sync status. And we can choose 
which one we, we want uh, to be shown in the in the screens. Again, this can be applied global and, in, and for specific programs. In this case, I added, uh, I decided for global settings to add only to only show the period and signal status. Uh, I chose, for example, this um, uh, this data set, and it, it showed me the the same filters that I that I put it globally because I didn't create a specific setting for childhood. So we are almost finished with the presentation, but um, today I'm not going to talk about much about analytic settings because tomorrow you'll have a very interesting um, and a completely uh, complete session uh, related to, to this topic, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, as part of the Android settings web app, you can find analytic settings that give us give us the opportunity to create visualizations for and um, analytics for the TIs um, that can be can can appear in the home program and data set. And also these but uh, these visualization have a very special validation. So only after these visualizations are um, are decided that are valid, they this you 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 can create this these visualizations. Don't worry, you're gonna have a um, a, a whole session related to this topic. So I'm not gonna talk much about more about this. Just wanted to let you know that we have access to, to this section. Um, as I said at the beginning, I want us to know uh, how to install the web app. But also, if you want to install, you can also have the option to not only reset, but delete everything that you have in the Android web app. So let's start with delete. Uh, as part of the settings that you can that we find in general settings in the Android settings with web app is we can find the disable all settings. That is a button that what basically do is that remove everything. And I'm gonna say it again, it's everything. Um, so if be again, be careful if you decided to do if you do it, because it's going to remove everything that it's for uh, it's like removing everything that, that you have created and you will end up with uh, like if it was the first time you are using the the, the setting web app. So again if you so if you decide to for some reason uh, disable all your settings and remove everything that you have created, you have also the option to create um, to do the first to run the first time setup. Um, as I said at the beginning, the first time setup, it's only uh, it's a thing that only users with all the authorities can do. Also, well, if you're uh, disabled, it's also part of the things that you can do all, only if you have all authorities. But when you do the first time setup, this, uh, uh, this, mes this message will pop up and only if you click on set defaults and save, you will what uh, what you will have is all the default values that are needed to run the Android settings web app will be set, and after that you can again start creating all the settings that you want. Um, so what you need now that we have gone through most of the Android settings web app and their config and the configurations that we can create there. You feel if you feel like trying it, I actually encourage you to try it. Uh, and you feel like uh, and you want to install it. So you can find the Android settings web app in the app uh, in the app hub. And to do it to do it you need to do to go to app management. The app management is an app that DHIS2 uh, has that provide us with all the apps that are uh, that are part of the app hub or the app store. 
uh, we click on up half or up star depending on the version that you have. Um, then we need to search under settings. Uh, under settings, um, if you click on under settings, all the uh, a list of all the versions that we have uh, will be up, will appear. I recommend you to use the latest one. That is the one that we are using in this um, session, and also that one that is already installed in the in the server, in the academy server. And then click install. And after you click install, uh, the the icon of the Android settings uh, web app will appear in your uh, as part of the the apps that you have access in your server. Mm, almost finishing, so just want you to know that uh, we might not always have all the uh, answers to your doubts, uh, but we we'll, we are always here to uh, try to find them, to find an option or some more information uh, to help. Um, while doing so, uh, I encourage you to to also. Uh, read or review what we can find in the Android settings documentation or Android documentation, but also on the community of practice. It's uh, also a good idea to to, hear, uh, to connect with uh, other people that are using the uh, all our tools. Um, with, with this, well, I think um, I'm finished with the session. Now I'm going to show you what we're gonna do for the exercise. Um, also very open to feedback um, to help in whatever way I can I can help. Um, here the exercise I'm gonna show you. Uh, as I said, as part of what I wanted uh, us to do during this session was learn how to navigate through the Android settings web app, but also how to do it uh, to find these uh, settings in our devices. So our first exercise is going, so what we are doing in both exercise is actually take a screenshot, one related, one that is, that comes from the Android settings web app and the other one that will come from your device. Mm. Um, as I said uh, during the presentation, uh, if you log in uh, to the Academy server with your admin user, you will find the Android settings web app as part of the apps that you have access to. Uh, but when you get into the, when you open the, the web app, you only uh, will uh, see, you will only find the, the, set, the settings in a view mode. So you will not be able to create, edit, or delete any kind of settings. But don't worry, because um, these exercises are not related to to, uh, to create or edit these uh, settings. You only need them to, uh, you only need the, the view access for, for, these, uh, for this exercise. So the first one, uh, the first exercise is taking two screenshots. So, we have, um, while I was talking about the, some of the configurations, I talk about the reserved values um, that are actually in this uh, under the uh, general settings. So I want I want you to take a screenshot of the of the reserved values that you can that you find that you can find in the in your Android settings web app. But also, I want you to take a screenshot of what you can of the reserved values that you can find in your device. Um, I think it's uh, something that we can manage to do it. Um, one that comes from the from the web app, and the other one coming from the Android settings. Uh, and sorry, one from the web app, the Android settings web app, and the other one coming from the Android app. So it's from your device, right? Um, the second exercise, uh, it's more related to the programs and the synchronization. So again, one screenshot coming from the web app 
and the other one coming from your device. So as I said during the presentation, uh, we can create a specific uh, settings coming from the from your program. Um, this, these settings uh, can also be fine in your device. So if we go to program thing settings, uh, every student will find um, probably two, uh, at least uh, two, um, two programs. And one program is common to, er to all the students. And the other program is the program the uh, that is specifically specifically assigned to to your user. So you'll find two programs, one program that is for everyone and the other one that is for you, only from your user. Um, I want you to take a screenshot coming from the web app. From if you want, you can show the the whole screen from program settings. If you decided only coming the part of the specific settings. And I want you to compare it to what you can find in your device. So again, if you go to settings, you will find under sync param parameters, uh, the kind of the same configuration. And I want you to take a screenshot also from your device. And if you can uh, find that both uh, the program that uh, your program is there, then it will be really good. Um, I think that will be it. Uh, it's time to try it yourself. Uh, first screenshots, two coming from the first exercise, the other two coming from the second exercise. Um, well, uh, that will be it. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you find very helpful this presentation. Um, open for feedback um to help with all questions that you have and just a reminder that the word of the day is metadata and that's it thank you so much <laughs>